Echo 2024 miniseries for the MCU. Spoiler free review. I'm going to start by telling you this was a miniseries that I absolutely loved. This video will not have any spoilers. There will be jokes, none of the expensive members of minorities, and I will get into some serious topics. And yeah, um, let's start with the the um, yes. There will not be spoilers for the show. I might spoil some MCU stuff leading up to it, though you can technically watch this without having watched anything else MCU. This is part of the Spotlight, Marvel Spotlight banner, which is basically this thing of, you know, in, in part, the idea is that you can go into... Yeah, go into it without having any prior knowledge of the MCU. And the, yeah, um, yes, that, the, the show is rated TVMA, so, you know, similar to Marvel Netflix or Netflix Marvel, I can never remember what order those words go in, and it definitely does take advantage of that. There are some very brutal scenes. Often it's action scenes, but occasionally it's otherwise. There's something brutal in every episode. And this this is basically baby steps towards something, you know, on, on Disney+. Plus. Something that for sure is MCU canon actually being as gritty and brutal as the Marvel Netflix, Netflix Marvel stuff, they're not quite as brutal as those shows, and they are st there is still some of the lightness that we're familiar with from the, yeah, the usual MCU. And, yeah, a, a big part of the show is the the exploring you know Maya Lopez or Echo is Choctaw she is Native American and a major theme here is how her ancestors have paved the way for her and yeah they they do a really great job with that and the yeah so the the opening or the the pilot yeah the the first episode of the of the five currently there's only one season five episodes it's possible there will be more in the future but right now they haven't confirmed so you know i'm recording this now and if i need to add something if there are future seasons i'll record another video for that the the season opener is not the best it's sort of this thing of a, a chunk of it is summing up what happened with Maya on Hawkeye. And I can personally appreciate, you know, some, some people absolutely hated this. I can appreciate that show was in 2001. This is, it's, it's, a, it's a big ask to, to require people to remember a, you know, major character, but not... Not everybody loves her. I always did. I, I right from frame one, you know, but a lot of people didn't. There's enough there that it's justified to give her her own show, to to make a show specifically about the character. She's significantly more interesting than most of the straight white cis men that we're usually getting in the MCU. But it's you know it's a lot to ask that people remember all the important plot points that involve her character. So basically, yeah, a chunk of the very first episode, you know, it speed runs through some of it. It It is not going to have the same impact if you did not watch Hawkeye. I, I don't think you really need to watch... Well, yeah, I mean, that is the thing. If you watch Hawkeye and you haven't watched Endgame, 
then that's not going to hit quite as hard. And if you watch Endgame, you haven't watched all the MCU stuff that it directly references. Uh, yeah. Technically, you can, but I would probably recommend just watching Hawkeye and then this. Maybe also at least season one of Daredevil. There is one major plot point in that that this expects you to already know. You know, you're going to be able to follow it, but it's not going to have the same emotional impact if you watch this before Daredevil. And I do hope you watch Daredevil. The, the, yeah. The, the very first episode has a bunch of clips from Hawkeye. I understand why. I wish that they had basically just released a separate thing that was like, here is what you need to remember from Hawkeye. Because me, I do remember. I remember all of it. I, you know, she was, like, if the moment that I heard that they were going to give her her own show, I was like, yes, thank you. If they had said that about Kazi, I'd be like, oh, right, that guy. Ugh. I mean, unless you do actually take the character from the comic. Like, he's super interesting in the comics, and they really didn't. I, I don't think he even needed to be in Hawkeye. The stuff he does could have been done by a character we didn't really know. Anyway, but the and, and I'm not one of those purists who say that everything has to be exactly like the comics. I'm just saying, if you're going to change something that was complex in the comics, change it for something else that com that's complex. They made a number of changes to, to Echo, but, you know, a lot of them are, are quite interesting. But, yeah, um... So we end up with the the this first episode. I, I can't quite tell you to just skip that one and watch the, the rest of it because there is some stuff in it that wasn't in the Hawkeye miniseries. But yeah, I wish that they had made a... That, that they had only had stuff that we hadn't seen in the Hawkeye show and then just, yeah, had a separate thing that that summed up all of the the echo stuff from Hawkeye. Now the finale. I don't think that Disney Plus has yet delivered a really truly just amazing finale to an MCU show. I think that they'll you know eventually get there. I do appreciate this is this is only five episodes. This is the the shortest. You know, the the usual is is six episodes for for a Disney Plus MCU show, and yeah, you know they they looked at this and they were like, it doesn't really make sense to try to force it into, you know, and and so they actually only made five, and some of the episodes are actually fairly short, also, you know. I, I definitely do think that there's more you can do with this character, and I I would be extremely surprised if she's not. Well, actually, yeah, we already know that she's she's been confirmed for the for Daredevil: Born Again. You know, it's it's not that, but yeah, the the story they had here would not really have sustained. You know, if they had tried to make it six episodes, we would have gotten filler, and I really appreciate that we do not. Now, the Choctaw actually got input on the, the scripts here, and it really shows. There's great authenticity to it. And we also, they, they cast actual Native Americans for, you know, basically every single role where that made sense. Every character who is a Native American is, if, if at all possible, portrayed by a Native American actor and yeah you know parts of it are celebrate celebrating the the Choctaw culture and let's see right um, I, I'm not sure if this is on Disney Plus in all countries it might be on Hulu in some places so you know if you can't find it on Disney Plus it's either that or you've gotten the the age rating set to something that's too low now, you know, some some people don't really consider Echo to be 
sufficiently cool to be headlining her own show. To be clear, this show does not feature a badass Native American woman. It features four. So, yeah, really greatly appreciate that. Um, and, yeah, uh, there's something interesting to every major character. And you get a sense of the 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 organized crime world. Uh, yeah, that might be about it for the yeah. So so the you know the the show in part goes into the you know. Yeah, Lacroix Cox returns as Maya Lopez, and it explores some of the difficulties that Maya dealt with on account of the the trauma. You know, we we already knew some of the the trauma, but they, yeah, there's some stuff we didn't already quite know from from watching Hawkeye. And also this thing of, you know, she, she communicates through sign language as, you know, a, a deaf woman. And let's see. I, th I think that might be about what I wanted to say. Oh, right, right, yes more about character, yes. Um, Devery Jacobs plays Bonnie, and she, you know, recently voiced Kahori in the second season of What If, and, you know, th this, yeah, the actress herself has said this, it's a coincidence, it's not, the, the two characters are not related, but, yeah, she's, you know, a... Yeah, of a, a compelling character. Basically, she and Maya had, you know, were, were close when they were children, and then they were pulled apart. And yeah, the the you know, to to some extent, Bonnie represents sort of the innocence that Maya left behind when she was taken from her home as a child, and you know, perhaps also acts as a as a counterpoint so that you don't have white supremacists watching this and being like, oh, so women and Native Americans are prone to being, you know, organized crime people. No. Dev you know, Bonnie is also both of those things, but she's an EMT. You know, it's the fact that she was raised by people who instilled good values in her, whereas Maya was raised by her father, who was part of organized crime, and got a lot of training from Wilson Fisk, the head of organized crime in New York. And, let's see... Yeah, and, and I want to, to underline, Devery Jacobs actually, in addition to being uh, an actress, she's also a writer and director. She's doing a lot to to make sure that Native American stories are told properly and yeah it's it's great that is definitely the way that it's going to happen it's not justice is not going to get get done to it by a bunch of straight white cis men telling these stories it's you know We've kind of had our chance. We've been showing for, for quite some decades now. We're just not up to it. We don't... Yeah. You know, I, I distinctly remember when I was younger, I wasn't really being asked, at least not by other straight white cis men, very much, some, but not very much, to actually respect other people's culture. Like, it was basically just we were... We were taught the culture we were growing up in, and everything else was kind of treated as other. Like, I'm, I'm fortunate enough that my, my own parents did do what they could. And then, you know, once 
I got, you know, once once YouTube really opened the door for a lot of people who have different cultures than I, you know, finally I was getting it, you know, what what's the word, first-hand account instead of, you know, a bunch of white men judging stuff that they really didn't understand. And... Yeah, uh, uh, personally, I don't... I'm not saying that every single person who doesn't love the show is like automatically racist. There is a certain contingent of that and thankfully some of them are you know helpful enough that they'll just straight up write you know I don't understand why we need well you know why why do we even need to to tell their stories which is a very easy question to answer because white men have tried to genocide Native Americans a lot of their culture you know so so yeah this is honestly the least we could do but yeah I, I quite appreciate when when someone just comes right out and says I don't understand you know why why should we be you know trying to make amends for people our ancestors tried to genocide because when you read that, you know, oh, this person has nothing of worth to say, and you can just skip to the next review. This has really excellent stunt work. I wouldn't completely say that it gets to the level of something like Netflix Daredevil, but it's definitely, you know, it makes strides in that direction. And I completely disagree with those who say that they're not impressive at all. They they are, yeah. There's there's a lot to to really love. You know, Alakwa Cox herself is incredibly gifted. As you know, yeah. As as the with with her physical performance. But uh, and and also the acting. I've, I've I saw some people say, oh, you know, she she only has like one face. You know, she she only makes one face when she's acting, and it's like, yeah, because her acting is more subtle. She doesn't need to pull multiple faces. That I I it's kind of wild to me. It's it's kind of I I do not understand why there's people still saying, oh, you know, you need to pull multiple faces. I know that that used to be the case, but there's tons of actors who pull multiple faces who are not particularly good actors. You know, I've I've long said that under the right circumstances, people like Sylvester Stallone, Arnold Schwarzenegger, and yes, even Jean-Claude Van Damme, under the right circumstances, they can actually act. You just got to give them the right role. It's I wish that they had said no to all the roles that weren't quite right for them, but I appreciate that at least some of the time they kind of had to do what was best for the, their career. They're able to pull very distinctly different faces in roles where they don't do good acting. The two are not mutually exclusive. It's not, yeah. And, you know, Alakwa Cox is actually deaf and has, you know, a, a prosthetic leg, just like her character. And I quite appreciate they actually, you know, not everyone who communicates with her is equally good at uh, ASL. Some of them have to, like, pause briefly to think of, wait, how do you sign that? And some of them actually do say what the, you know, they, they say it out loud as they're, they're signing, which I'm told, I, I don't have personal experience with it, but I'm told that is a sign of not completely, you know, it's essentially, it's wasted effort, you could say, you know, you don't need to, it's, it doesn't accomplish anything to be saying the words as you're, you're signing, like, maybe, you know, like, if, if you're doing lip reading, that can, you know, but the, you know, yeah, it's, it's a sign that they, they understand ASL, but they're not completely used to, to speaking it, and, yeah, Quite appreciate that bit of ah, what's the word uh, nuance to it. Yeah, the action is really, really great. Uh, it is not the most action-heavy show, but you know, there's other 
you know, if you if you're watching this on Disney Plus, there's a lot of MCU stuff that has a ton of action. You know, it wasn't really what they wanted to focus the most on here. But yeah, it's physical fights, it's shootouts, there's a little bit of vehicle stuff, and the music is excellent, and you know, there's both original score and licensed music, and for, for both of them, it really fits what they're going for. And there's a lot of the music that's actually produced by Native Americans, further adding to the, the authenticity. The sound design is solid. Uh, there's this choice of every so often... It's, uh, it's not super often, but I would say it happens at least once per episode. The sound will go out, and all we hear is a heartbeat. And this is, of course putting us in the perspective of Maya. And when there's violence, the sound design does a great job in selling the the violence with like there's a there's a very early like neck snap which is just like incredibly brutal sounding. You know, I've I've been watching violent stuff since I was 13, so you know, more than 25 years now, and yeah, it's it's very, very it's it's one of the the gnarliest neck snaps I've I've ever heard. So as mentioned, there are five episodes, and yeah, the the they range from somewhere in the 30, I think 34 minutes or so, up to almost 50. You know, I, I saw someone say it, you know, it'll take you about three hours to watch the entire thing. And we're usually, you know, for, for a very long time, they, you know, yeah, since back in 2021, they've been releasing an episode every week. You know, with the, with What If Season 2, they released one every day. And with this, they released all of the episodes on the same day, so it is entirely possible to sit down and just, well, you know, by now, it's obviously entirely possible, but you could have watched, and I'm aware, you know, some people watch this, it dropped on the, on the 10th, it's the 14th today, you know, I don't love watching more than one episode of the same thing in, in a day, hence, yeah, but, you know, th I, I believe this is like an audience retention thing, and certainly, I can appreciate, you know, some people would prefer to watch it all in in a, you know, basically a single sitting. And this is very bingeable. You could absolutely, you know, there, there are some things where there's just, maybe it's too emotional. Maybe sometimes it isn't quite fast paced enough. You know, there's there's various different reasons why something might not be great for binging, but this absolutely is. The the best elements of the show, I would say, are the diversity and representation, and the yeah, this this kind of brutal. Like, I love that, like Maya is one of the first proper anti heroes that's like acknowledged as MCU canon. You know, the show kind of acts as though Daredevil more or less happened, but maybe slightly differently. There's some discrepancies that have had people, you know, wondering, but yeah, you know, Maya is not a hero. Uh, at least not when we first meet her. You know, she she wasn't a hero when we left her in Hawkeye. She's not a hero when this or, you know, this miniseries starts, and I quite appreciate that. I think a lot of the most interesting characters in comic book history are the anti-heroes. And the, let's see. Yeah, uh, I would, you know, I know I said some critical things about the the opening and the finale, I do maintain, I, I do love every single episode of this show, and I, I think there are some 
aspects where, you know, you could argue, well, that could have, you know, we could have done more with that character. The fact that she is, you know, for sure Maya is coming back. It's possible that some of her supporting, the, some of the supporting cast from this show will also be back for that. You know, otherwise I would probably go harder against it if this was completely standalone. If we were never seeing this character again, I, I would go harder on it. But I do think that gives it a little more, you know, and this is also... I, I feel like this might be the last, it's certainly, if not the last, one of the last, you know, Disney Plus MCU shows before they started actually doing the the old-fashioned thing of having showrunners and show bibles, you know, which they are going to from, the, you know, that's why they, they, you know, they had some, they had finished at least some of Daredevil Born Again, but they scrapped at least a lot of it and started over because, yeah, without a showrunner, it's not it's just not it's probably not going to work out quite as well. But yeah, you know, and and yeah, that is also the case here. But it is thankfully also you know they've learned their lesson. I I agree with calling out mistakes. But I also agree with leaving room for, for learning, you know, I, I would really be frustrated with them if they just, like, if they, if they did that thing of, like, writing, you know, tax write-off thing, which, you know, the, Disney did with the, the Willow show, which, you know, yeah, I know, wasn't, not, not as many people watched it as they had hoped, but that show was severely underrated. Now, the, the trailers for the show, for Echo, do give at least a little bit too much away, but also give you a good sense of what the show is like. And, let's see, let me have the, the cover and poster. Um, not, they, it's not really that they give too much away, but there's maybe, there's some major clues but yeah, um, and and they do give you a good idea of what the show is like. The show has more metaphors and implies more than some people really liked about it. And I do definitely, you know, if there's stuff you had trouble following, I recommend the. There were um, uh, let's see, I, I believe they call them Easter egg videos by Screen Crush and Crush and New Rock Stars right here on YouTube for each episode. Just note that they spoil the, the episode, so don't start watching them until you start watching the show, unless you simply don't watch the show. And on Rotten Tomatoes, this has a 72% from critics and a 67% from audiences. And from critics, yeah, there's 71 reviews by critics, 51 of them are fresh, and the average rating is 6.60 out of 10. The 67% from audiences is based on more than 1,000 ratings, and average rating of 3.5 out of 5. The consensus, Alakwa Cox makes Echo's first season consistently worth watching, while hard-hitting action and fresh narrative elements suggest strong potential for this slow-building series. And on Metacritic, we have, it has a 62 out of 100 from critics, so generally favorable. There's 23 critic reviews, 12 positive, 10 mixed, and 1 negative, and... The, yeah, users gave it 5.9 out of 10. And, hold on. Uh, let's see, where do we find the, I'm trying to find how many ratings. 166 user ratings. 85 positive, 61 negative, 20 mixed. And there are 31 user reviews. And, let's see, the... Yeah, um, 
I try, I really, I swear, I try to give a chance to negative reviews, but the, one person here literally says, the hero is really a villain. That's part of the point. That's literally part of the point of the show. Like, we, we watch her, we hope that she'll turn towards the good, but we're not supposed to be, like, cheering her on. I, the show makes very clear that she's not, she's not a hero. She, there's, there's several major cases where she has the opportunity to do the right thing, and she chooses not to. And... Let's see. The... Yeah. Uh, not a lot to... I think, yeah, another one person says, this show has nothing to offer besides checkboxes. Thank you. Not going to read anything else that you write. And, yeah. Um, one person who misunderstood that South Park episode, The Pandaverse, And one person outright using the word degenerate. Wow. Yeah, the anti-SJWs really infested Metacritic on this one. But then, you know, Metacritic is a place that they go for. And yeah, and again, I like a lot of these negative reviews. They they're not even at they're not even adding anything. They just say I didn't like it with various different words they don't describe what's supposed to be bad about it I'm not saying that it's a perfect show I've tried to go into some of the things that I think could have been better you know and a lot of them they seem to just not like that this is not centering a straight white cis man now the yeah so on IMDb there are currently 187 user reviews or 135 if you Hide spoilers and let's real quick do a yeah. So the there are yeah of those of of the hundred and eighty seven twenty nine gave it one twenty gave it two seventeen gave it three twenty four gave it four twenty seven gave it five. 20 gave it 6, 17 gave it 7, 27 gave it 8, 10 gave it 9, and 18 gave it 10. So, yeah, there's a significant, yeah, some, some people really loved it, some people really did not. But the, yeah, some people absolutely understood. There's one reviewer that's, you know, the, the one-line summary is strength in culture and family. One person said native representation done right. And, yeah, once, wow. Yeah, one person wrote unlikable main character as if that isn't part of, the point. I really, I, I really hope I live to see the day where people stop using unlikable as a criticism. It can be a description, but by itself it's neutral. If you're not supposed to like them, then the character being unlikable is a good thing. That's just, yeah. And this person wrote, the hand signing had me frequently yawning as it was incredibly annoying to watch. You can go straight to hell. Wow. And these are the people that feel empowered by the, the rise of fascism. <sighs> Moving on. There are currently 13,000 IMDb user rate ratings, and it comes out to a, an average of 6.2. 17.7% .7 gave it 7, 16.2 gave it 10, 13.9 gave it 6, 12.8 gave it 8, 
and 12.12 .12 gave it 1. So, yeah. I would love to think that the majority of those are not alt-right, but giving this an actual 1 out of 10 is completely absurd. 8.0% gave it 5, 5.9 gave it 9, 5.2 gave it 4, 4.2 gave it 2, 3.9 gave it 3. And so the special effects are slightly mixed. There's definitely some CG that could be more convincing, you know, and hopefully Disney starts paying the, the CG artists properly. But there's also some stuff where it is completely photorealistic. And let's see. Yeah, and I, I quite appreciate, you know, you know, I mentioned that this is brutal and violent. At least some of the, the blood is proper stage blood, not CG blood. CG blood just rarely is completely convincing. And, you know, ideally you'll only want to rely on it when it's simply completely unavoidable. There are not currently any... Uh, special features for this on Disney Plus. Given you know that they've done it for for most, I can imagine that there there will be forthcoming a behind the scenes specific to this. And yeah, um, I rate this nine respectful you know, authentic representations of Native American culture out of 10. And yeah, uh, let's, uh, hmm. do I not have, I could have sworn that I had it somewhere around here. Um, oh, here we go. Yes. Um, yes. So I have a ranking of all of the different yeah so the the overall show or season ranking worst to best of the Disney Plus MCU shows keeping in mind I do love all of these shows I'm just ranking you know something has to go at the bottom Loki season 1 what if season 1 secret invasion Hawkeye, The Falcon and the Winter Soldier, Loki Season 2, Moon Knight, Ms. Marvel, Echo, and WandaVision. And the finale, and this is only for the ones that have ended their run, so, you know, what if does not appear here. Yeah, uh, worst to best, Secret Invasion, Hawkeye, The Falcon and the Winter Soldier, Echo, Loki Season 2, Moon Knight, Ms. Marvel, and WandaVision. And Pilot, worst to best. What if Loki, Echo, Hawkeye, Secret Invasion, The Falcon and the Winter Soldier, Moon Knight, Ms. Marvel, and WandaVision. And yeah, um, hit me up in the comments. Let me know what do you hope for the future of the character of Echo and other major characters in this, including obviously Kingpin. And yeah, if you like this video, please thumbs up, subscribe, hit that little bell. There should be a link to my main channel page, one to more links to stuff like relevant playlists, a suggested video for you to watch on the screen right about now. I put out one vlog per week reviewing and sharing spoil thoughts on a movie and Let's see, I try to do a daily one of a Marvel TV series episode. I'm currently halfway through Season 4 of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. I'm doing them chronologically, though I did already do Marvel Netflix, but other than that, chronologically. I do a weekly video on a horror thing right now. I am working my way through, fairly early in the run still, Ash vs. Evil Dead. I try to do a weekly video on 
an episode of an animated Star Wars show that I haven't already done. I'm working my way through the last chunk of Young Jedi Adventures. And recently there have been thoughts videos thinking about very similar to this one, but with the thoughts in the same video instead of in separate videos, since the running time of a, a film is significantly shorter than a show. I, t yes, if you want my thoughts specific, if you want to hear what I have to say about the individual episodes, you don't mind spoilers, I recorded a video for each episode. So, you know, you can watch, you know, I'm not going to talk about episode five in the one for episode one or two, three, or four. In other words, if you more videos like this, your luck. You can check out my back catalogs. Must catch me next week. I hope you enjoyed watching as I enjoy watching and recording. And I will catch you next time.